Welcome back to another one of our short design videos and today we're going to look at the shallow water technique. Now I've used this on a couple of courses recently which has prompted a few questions and I very much wasn't the first person to use this. So we're starting by looking at what this looked like. So this is Hoback's Range Sports Club by Mayday and I think this is the first one where we'd seen this. As you can see the water is very shallow um, which creates these sort of mud flats which is very specific to the look he was trying to get. And that's the first point. This is very much used to create a look it's a technique that can help for certain types of looks and it's a really subtle one um, and what it does do really nicely is helps to create an environment but it's by no means the be all and end all so we're going to look at a few courses on how to do this ways in which you can leverage it um, and why it might be useful for you so first of all we're going to look at what this technique is and why you might want to use it now if we're looking at Wazazat which is one of my courses for the recent national treasure contest you'll notice that we've got some of the water that's very deep and some of it that looks quite sandy from overhead. Now first of all, it's really a very subtle thing. You generally won't notice it that much from the tee, if at all. You have to be looking at it with a little bit of height and ideally not into the sun because that can blind it a little bit more. So there's certain angles, as you can see, we're panning around where it will look better than others. And it's for very marginal gains. You're probably not going to want to ba base an entire course off this, but it can be quite nice. Where I think it looks quite good is on the overhead. Um, and when the ball's on a flyover, so when you're following the, the shot that you've just hit, you can see this. It's quite nice for different bits of colour change as well. So, now this also therefore varies by theme, because as you'll see, the colour that we've got here, basically what we're, do we're doing is dragging the base texture as close to the top of the water as possible. So you can see we've gone up by like 0.1 of a feet a foot before we're at the surface. So this is basically right just under the water which is why you can see more of the land, whereas the deeper areas here, well, we're looking at yeah, 16, 17 feet. So that's what causes it. So therefore, how to do this, and then why you might want to do it. In terms of doing it, all you want to do is really take flatten, because we want as much of the land as possible close. And I take this fuzzy brush, and basically just drag it. Now, you might take a couple of moves, so don't worry if a lot of the land comes up above it you're basically trying to get as much of this land as possible close to the water surface. So I might first start off by raising it a bit with flatten as you'll see more of it comes up then I'll kind of lower and as you can see what we're generally trying to do is just get it all just below the surface but I find the fuzzy brush works well because there's still a little bit of randomness to it. So having done all of that or well you can see we've got quite a lot of it and you do then end up with these little bits that are kind of left on top as we saw with Mayday's um, back and you can then plant those and it gives you a nice random area to plant. Now one thing you will notice here is there's a little bit of flickering so you can see just here that's where and if we draw a measure tool from here that'll be at dead zero to kind of like the height of the water and the game's not quite sure when it does that whether it's above the water or below the water so it's not quite sure whether it should be working out whether that should be there or not. So to avoid that what I tend to do is just take a slightly different brush and lower around by an inch and that usually and maybe raise the inside a touch and that then makes the delineation a bit clearer for the game so it knows I mean, it's still not very high but it still knows where that is or not so why might you do this well part of the reason for doing this can be planting based um, if for example with grasses let's say we're going with the kind of look that I'm going for in this one Let's say we're going to take this grass. Normally I have to raise or lower that manually and just spam around like so. And that can be absolutely fine, but obviously everything's at one height. When we're doing it with the shallow water trick, though, we can suddenly go back to multi-planting because it's only just below the water. So it looks like we're planting on water, but we can still use multi-plant, things like that. Um, we can have our grass scaled and just follow the water so it gradually bleeds into the water. So stuff like this, which can look quite nice um, over a longer period. It's again, very subtle, but things that you can do quite easily. And what that also therefore means is you can then really easily, and if you've seen my tip on like custom tree lines, it's the same thing. Well, we can adapt the planting to the land below it. So I can just do this, and suddenly we're all on top of the water, but we've used all that multi-plant. What it then also means that I can do is copy and paste on water. So, can copy that and let's put it over here. And because it's pretty much the same height, and remember it all goes to base height of terrain, we can even copy some of that stuff over which we didn't want, but 
you'll get the same stuff whereas if we were trying to copy and paste this onto lower water it's going to fit it's going to sit somewhere way down there so the planting is still there it's just way below the water where we can't see it because it's as you can see from there it's quite low so that's kind of a few of the tricks that you might want to use this for but the real one is like being able to see that terrain and you get a nice blend between water's edge and the like water when you do this so at the moment it's quite like, going down not ra not drastically quickly but quickly here whereas if we pan over to this area which is a little bit lower you can really notice the difference so this water is very much right below the surface and it gives you that feeling of like we're properly in lowlands and wetlands um, rather than it just being land then water there's a bit more of a merging and a transition between the two and you'll really start to notice that if we sink this water and show you what it would look like if let's say everything went down and this was just a, a big river and it was like four feet down so we'll just sink all of that and now you can really see that that water is just deeper bluer whereas if we compare here and just hit undo there's quite a sizable difference there now it's subtle and it's very much more a tool for like more advanced designers where you're looking to really hone in on environment creation but it's one little thing that you can use in your arsenal to kind of just create that environment that you're going for um, and as you can see there's a bit of a juxtaposition between this style and then your deeper water kind of out over here um, and I think it can work really nicely in the right sort of environment but you've got to think about whether it fits. So the next course that we're going to look at is my most recent which is Dark Water Barrens and here we're in Delta so you get a slightly different base terrain and really the part that you're looking to expose is that little natural area just by the water so rather than heavy rough you get this kind of sandy area and if we go to the overhead you see loads of that so it gives this really cool look from the overhead. Now you also get to see quite a lot of that off certain tee shots um, again compared to that last tee shot of Wazazat where you saw the really low water well it's all looking very sandy and misty and given that you're in marshland where I figure everything is either slightly above the water or slightly below the water it made sense what it also allowed me to do was basically with plot creation all I did was um, have the water table at like, let's say zero and then start erasing the land using a couple of random brushes like this or like let's say nine or ten inches and just spamming them around and then we'll lower it a little bit by the same and you end up with these sorts of shapes and then what it basically became was my routing in this area was just well I knew I had the higher holes that I so like one to four and then eighteen I knew where they were going to go from the start all of the rest of them were just like right okay you're going for a little trek through this marshland use this sort of stuff to find some holes um, and you can just see with where the land is you get all sorts of ideas so you might want to take a tee shot over there you might want to drive four to there it was a path three to here there was loads that you could do with that now the final one we're going to look at is Utlus which is going to be my upcoming course for 2k for the winter theme in December and you'll recall that I basically said that you could expose this texture quite nicely now I had to do winter which was difficult because we've lost those white textures and things that we used to have and all the trees that were winterish but I felt that this could be quite used quite interestingly now using that same flat water technique you end up with this sort of stony texture just above the water which actually if you catch the right lighting can look kind of like ice so I figured that was an interesting one in terms of then you accent it with accent it with like whitish greenish planting and you get some pretty cool looks particularly from the overhead that looks like a frozen lake um, now again minor minor things but in looking for those little details of making an environment look realistic I think that's quite a nice one um, what we then tried to do a little bit and it's finicky and I'll probably still keep working on it sculpt them up a little bit so they look like little like iceberg sort of things so they don't look too flat and it's then trying to get them into little clumps of areas rather than just dotted around all over the place um, but I think you get some quite cool looks from this and it's certainly different and seems to fit the theme that I was given quite nicely now is it something that I'm doing absolutely everywhere no we've got a lake back here that is just a like a large lake that probably wouldn't have frozen water on it because it's such a large body of water um, but it's something you can pick and choose when you pull it as a trick 
it's not going to be a deal breaker, it's not something that's immediately going to rocket your courses to tour worthy or what have you, but it can occasionally be a really fun tool to use and gives you some slightly different looks with how you play around with it. So that's shallow water and how we might use it, what, how you would go about doing it, why you might use it. Um, like I say, it's a really subtle thing and it's by far and, by far and away not the most important thing for beginner designers to be focusing on. Go with sight lines, sculpting, surfacing, hole designs every single time. But as a kind of niche little technical tool for those of you wanting to try something new out, it can be quite fun. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed and that's been helpful. See you again soon.